June 6, 1996. A mysterious explosion destroys the Chernobyl research facility near Moscow. Lucifer Alpha, a powerful biological weapon under secret development there, is released into the atmosphere, creating a deadly biohazard. Carried by the trade winds, Lucifer Alpha spreads throughout Eastern Europe and Eurasia, destroying 80% of the populace. Half of the world's people die. The greatest biohazard in history later becomes known simply as the catastrophe. But at this time, who could have possibly imagined that the ultimate biohazard wouldn't occur for another half century? 50 years later, mankind faces its greatest crisis, the appearance of a mysterious android life form. Its purpose and origin are unknown. Is it a new form of weapon? Or perhaps an invasion from some other world? They appear during winter, killing humans and infiltrating society by taking the place of their victims. Employing an artificial skin, they can sweat and even bleed. Part organic, part machine, they're almost impossible to distinguish from those they kill. As they steal their victims' bodies in order to take their place, these mysterious invaders become known as Snatchers. work everything okay mm. Gillian what is it what's wrong Jamie I've become a junker a junker Gillian but why Jamie you know why it's the only way we can regain our lost memories snatcher is the only word that keeps coming back every time we try to remember our past 
I have to face them to find out why. Yes, but I can sense that there is something terrible hidden in our past. And if we remember it, it will destroy us. Jamie! I'm going now. Jamie! What? I can't hear you! zone by the 17th Siberian Investigative Force. Both Gillian and Jamie suffer from severe amnesia, their memories of events prior to being picked up in Siberia, lost in a mysterious mental fog. Two years ago, after a vain attempt to rebuild their marriage, Jamie and Gillian separate. Following extensive special military training, Gillian is ordered to report to Neo Kobe City as a junker. Effective today. Alright, so here we go. This is Snatcher for the Sega CD. It's the only English version they've ever come out with, and I'm surprised they've never done a re-release. So, first thing we need to do is we need to get into the building. Because if we try to enter, it won't let us. Um, some things we have to look at, as you can see, this is kind of like a point in um, Portopia style game. So it's very visual novel based. So there's a lot of atmosphere to it. Um, we're not going to click on everything in every scene. It would take far too long. Um, just kind of want you to get the hang of what we're doing here. Um, there are certain things we certainly do have to click on and look and investigate a couple of times before we can proceed further. And certain things that will be plot and story relevant. And even though we may not need to click on them now, we will click on them now. And our main character, Gillian, is a bit of a pervert. So. Um, there is a reason this video is marked mature. It won't be for language, but there will be some pretty obvious scenes coming up in the next five to ten minutes that some people might find disturbing. So that's why we've marked the video as mature. It's nothing you wouldn't normally see in a game anyways. Um, the language is fine. Just when you first meet your partner, there's kind of a grisly scene. I mean, we are investigators after all. I'm Gillian Seed. I've been assigned to Junker Headquarters effective today. Oh, you're Mr. Seed. Please forgive me. My name is Mika Slayton. I'm the administrative assistant and operator here at Junker Headquarters. Very pleased to meet you.
I'm not exactly sure how long I should leave the text on for you guys to read it, but um, I'm gonna read it and then go through it. If there's anything that I need to point out, I'll point it out. Okay, Gillian. I'll open the main door and show you around headquarters. All right, our first stop is the chief's office. We can try to go elsewhere, but it won't let us. Chief Cunningham, Gillian Seed is here. I brought him in as you requested. Thanks for coming, Seed. I'm Benson Cunningham, the Chief of Junker Operations. Gillian Seed, I've been transferred here from the 17th Special Forces Division. I've heard all about your special training in the military, Seed. I hope you'll put it to good use on your new assignment here. By the way, I understand you're suffering from amnesia. Any sign yet that your memory's coming back? I'm afraid not. I still can't remember a thing from before the army picked me up three years ago. You're married, aren't you? Yes, but we're separated now. She has amnesia as well, and without any memories between the two of us, I'm afraid there was very little to base a good relationship on. I can see your point there. All right, so we need to kind of look around. and LCD technology. Chaos system technology. There's a computer in headquarters. We're gonna go to that room, and um, it's called Jordan. And you can actually look up a lot of the um, background. There's a lot of story detail. You can look up the witch hunts, the catastrophe, the, um, pretty much everything that it, that the world involves. Only five of us in the organization. That should be enough to make your duties as a junker quite clear. This is your junker ID card. It will identify you as a junker. Carrying it allows you to exercise your special authority. I see. Sort of like a police officer's badge, huh? 
And uh, here's some money. It's not much, but you'll need it to carry out your investigation. Cash? Credit cards aren't accepted in some regions of the city. You'll need this sooner or later. Sounds like it's a rough place out there. Go see Harry, the engineer. He's got your equipment ready for you. All right, we'll check out our possessions real quick. World without cash. Cold hard cash. <laughs> Plenty to get the job done. <laughs> All right, so normally we would first go to engineering, but just to check and make sure um, our light gun's working properly, we're gonna go to the shooting range first. I just tested it before we started, but um. We want to make sure before we get into the game that I at least get the hang of the screen dimensions. So this is a Konami game developed by Hideo Kojima, famous for the Metal Gear series, which will become fairly evident quickly. All right, now we're just gonna practice shooting real quick. We've got our gun. Hopefully we're centered right. This is going to be for a long game. We just have to make sure we can hit every section. Alright, looks like our gun's working well. As long as we can hit every section you can um you can play this with the controller but um if you have the option to play with the gun play with the gun it's more fun and it um yeah it's more fun to play with the gun and it'll make act three especially much much easier Let's go to engineering first. We'll look around. You and I are destined to fall in love. There's nothing we can do in here yet, but we do have to go there first. And then we'll have to come back. Then we go to the detect detective's room. So there are two runners, me and, um, well, Gillian and Jean Jacques Gibson. And we'll meet Jean Jacques pretty soon.
Jean's really anti into antiques. That's actually important. Computer room, we gotta log into Jordan. So Jordan is basically the internet in a game before the internet was really a thing, but it's linked to all the databases. All right, so we're gonna um, we're gonna look at Jordan a little bit. Um, We're just going to look up a couple of things that might be plot relevant. Um, I don't think we have to, but we're going to we're going to start with um, our partner. Give us a little background. I think we can just put that in, and it would work fine. Put in his daughter's name because it'll save us a trip later. Yeah, not if I spell it wrong. And for fun, we'll put our name in. Alright, and that'll be enough for now. We'll have to make a couple of trips back here, I'm sure. I don't know what this does. Yeah, see, there's a lot you can look up if you really want to. You can sit here for an hour just going through everything. Alright, since I went to the shooting range, I think I can go back to the... To engineering now. Oh good, Harry's back. Great to meet you. You're uh, Gillian Seed, right? Haven't we met somewhere before? No, I don't believe so. Really? Well, I guess I must be imagining things. Every time we try to investigate somebody we know, it does something like that. Like, hey, don't touch me. Alright, 
right now we'll ask about navigators I know, and guns. I know. We'll get all of all our right? equipment. Allow me to introduce the navigator, which I designed especially for you. Hey, Metal Gear, get out here. Introduce yourself. Yes, sir. Pleased to meet you, Gillian. I am Metal Gear Mop 2. I am programmed to be your personal assistant. Metal Gear? That's a pretty weird name. Oh, he's cute. Uh, thank you. I think he's turning red. I took his basic design and his name from the Metal Gear Menace of the late 20th century. But, uh, quite unlike that Metal Gear, this one was designed for peaceful purposes. They don't carry any weapons. Video phone. Metal Gear is basically our iPhone or Android or whatever brand you want. You get some pretty funny stuff um, calling some of the numbers. Case of emergency. Carry me while you run. <laughs> All right, let's get some more of our um, equipment. Oh, that's right. Uh, don't panic yourself. Yeah, I got it right over here. This is your blaster, the official weapon of a junker. It's got full user feedback circuitry, adjusting itself to your reaction time. In other words, it's just as good as you are. What do you think? Here, see how she feels. It's unbelievably light. <laughs> you bet it is. This ain't one of those ray guns the army uses. She's put together with the latest carbon polymers and ceramics, not affected by heat one bit. And her ergonomic design optimizes both functionality and firepower. Well, what do you think, Gillian? I'll take it. Yeah, we got a gun. about snatchers. Gotta shoot him in the head. I have a video phone call from Jean-Jacques Gibson coming in. Connecting. Junker HQ, this is Gibson. I've cornered a probable male snatcher. I'm in the abandoned factory in the M district. Request immediate backup. Gillian, that means you. You better head out right away. Jean needs your help. We must hurry. We'll use a turbo cycle to travel to the scene. Be careful, Gillian. This is a turbo cycle, specially designed for junker use. In addition to three-wheeled ground travel, it is capable of hovering and high-speed flight. The vehicle is also VTOL capable, so takeoffs and landings in narrow areas present no difficulty. A flying tricycle, huh? I just came in on one of these things. We have been assigned this vehicle for use in our investigations. Take a look at it. It's a 
Rambo Plastics. We'll save when we get there. Departing for the abandoned factory. <laughs> My first day on the job, and now this. Ace Junker Gibson is cornered a suspected snatcher. I wonder if this guy really is a snatcher. Guess I'll find out now if all that training really paid off. This is the future, guys. We have to move closer. We'll save here. We'll save again when we get inside, but we'll save here for now. I read multiple moving objects within the factory. This could indicate the presence of snatchers or insectors. Insectors? What in the world's that? A spider-like robot used by snatchers as security devices. Though compact in size, they are armed with needle guns. Use extreme caution. All right, let's go in. called us from, so we'll look around. Tear down. Room. What the? It's Little John. Little John? Yes, Jean Jacques Gibson's personal navigator. We'll check out everything.
so we need to get his memory chip. They really wasted him. Well, what do you think? Can you get this memory chip out of there in one piece? I will attempt it. Now retrieving memory chip. Memory chip retrieved. Alright, we'll move on further. Let's see. I don't think he can even do anything with the... Alright, move on further. You ready, everyone? You guys ready to meet John? This is evidence. Search the house. Hmm. We 
Ooh, that hair. Let's check out the skin. Now analyzing recovered tissue sample. Analysis complete. Results on the display. One, enzyme antibody analysis indicates subject is blood type O, Rh factor negative. Two, chromosomal analysis of cells in the sample reveal 46XX. Subject is female. Three, cell component distribution indicates presence of artificial protein compounds. Four, number of melanocytes in sample indicates that subject is Caucasian. The results of the analysis strongly suggest that the tissue sample, a cluster of skin cells, was scraped from the subject during a struggle with Jean. These skin cells almost certainly came from a female European blood type O negative snatcher. Hmm. So he found a male snatcher, but there might be more. Probable male snatcher. Let's keep investigating. An analysis of Jean's stomach reveals a major lesion on the pyloric region of the gastric membrane. So, Jean had an ulcer, huh? Yes. In addition, I read a substantial quantity of partially digested organic compounds. Organic compounds? If you can determine the composition and the degree to which the food's been digested, we may be able to figure out where Jean's been. Organic compounds. Now making incision in Jean's stomach to analyze organic compounds present. You're a timer. Hmm. You can't hear a thing. Ah, turn the volume up. Oh, we found the source of the sound. Yes, we should save.
All right, so let's investigate the bomb. But we can't disarm it, so we should retreat. Are we ready? bit of gunplay. So we got hit. That's unfortunate. Better make it funnier later. All right, well, let's get the hell out of here. We're getting out of here. Sorry, I cannot go with you. What's wrong with you? Hurry it up. I am incapable of locomotion. What on earth are you blabbering about? Let's go! It's gonna blow! Please save yourself! I am paralyzed with fear! Oh, I can't believe this stupid robot! Come on! Jeez, my ears are really ringing. That's because you left the volume turned up. Damn snatchers. There is no need for concern. I have stored all the information about the evidence and the area in my memory. We should return to Junker Headquarters. We've returned to Junker Headquarters. Ooh, that was some first day. Now entering the building. We've entered the lobby. Gillian, I heard about Jean. I am sorry. I wish I could have done more. You performed your duties quite satisfactorily. That's right. It's not your fault, Gillian. Don't worry about it. By the way, the Chief is waiting for you. This is the Chief's office. Well, see, that was a pretty rough first assignment to draw. You made a great effort, though. I've studied the data transmitted back by Metal Gear, so I know all about what happened out there. It's too bad about Gibson. He was a great junker. Seed, I need you to take over for him. You're the only one I've got left who can battle this Snatcher menace. detective's room. Let's go see Harry first. Well, 
so our new Junker has returned. <clears throat> I register high alcohol levels. Harry is intoxicated. Nice. I really... You know, I really thought you were better than that. <clears throat> Harry! What kind of backup was that supposed to be? If you were a better Junker than that, Jean... Jean wouldn't have had to die out there. Harry, that statement is incorrect. Don't worry about it, Metal. Harry's right. Jean... <laughs> Sorry, it's... it's not your fault. <laughs> Metal, would you give Harry the memory chip we pulled out of Little John? Of course. Harry, this is Little John's memory chip. We're gonna use that. That's a video phone number on the bottle. We're gonna use it. is this? I'll perform an analysis. Acid inhibitors, membrane protecting agents, H2 blockers. This is medication for an ulcer. Jeez, it looks like Jean's stomach was really in terrible shape. And what was he doing eating buffalo? That seems a little unusual. Perhaps there was some reason that he had to eat buffalo. I think that's all we need. Oh yeah, there we go. Coat. does mean something. Let's use the video phone. And we will call that number.
I'm an acquaintance of Gibson. I need some information. You an investigator too, huh? Can't trust him. All right, let's have the password. The password? <laughs> I think if you just go and put the... Um number in the computer just tells you it's a video phone number and if you put it in the Jordan and the idea is that you're supposed to um, he's gonna ask you for a password and if you don't know it you just go and look up Napoleon um, there's a couple of different questions he could ask you most of them are quotes about Napoleon Know my stuff. So I must have told you. All right, we're gonna um, we're gonna go ahead and go to Gibson's house. I guess we could do it later, but we'll do it now. Get it over with. the best neighborhood. I guess apartments never change, even in the future. Just a sofa bed. Hmm. 
<laughs> like a very dreary life. <laughs> Nine, three, four, four, five. All right, so we're going to give Jamie a call. Jamie speaking. Oh, Gillian, how are you? Jamie works at Kobe Pharmaceuticals. to the hotel. Portopia. so we'll just hang up. We just need to contact her and ask her a couple of questions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Let's use the bathroom. Must come out. Alright, now we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna go on to the next spot. So we're gonna go, um, we're gonna meet Napoleon first. Screens in the background show different numbers. Love line. Let's call love line. John Doberman. Fictional. <laughs> Gillian. Get off the island. The... <laughs> the 
All right, so now we need to find Napoleon. Gibson knew his people were after him. Masquerade Club. So we're going to need to acquire a mask. <laughs> he is an informant. We got to pay him. Seventeenth Street in the HS District. And find out about Plato's Cavern. Send him home. We've learned places we need to go. We need to go to Outer Heaven, but in order to get to Outer Heaven, we have to go to Plato's Cavern. Stare at the screen in the background long enough, it'll tell you Plato's Cavern's number. But we already know it, so we'll just call it.
no dark atmosphere like other black market shops. That's all we need to know. Alright, so now we're gonna go to Plato's Cavern. the store with everything. So should we be a mummy or a moai? We're gonna get some Neo Kobe pizza while we're here too. Black market with billboards. So like, I think in the Japanese version it's a shiraku, the dumplings that you dump into the soup or... Let's get us some Neo Kobe pizza. Alright, let's try one of these floating pizza things. Sounds good to me. Uh, give us two regular Neo Kobe pizzas. Two coming up! You gotta put it in the soup yourself, okay? Okay. Here we go, Metal. Here's yours. Let's put them in on the count of three, okay? They get bland and soggy if they stay in too long. No problem. Ready? One, two, three! Very good! Now in a few seconds, they'll come floating up. When they do, pull yours out right away, okay? Don't mess it up. I'm ready. Come on up, little fellas. <laughs> nice snag there, Metal. Hey, where's mine? Oh, this is unusual. Oh. This is a break style. I wonder what the problem is. I want my pizza. <laughs> where's my pizza? What's the problem? Yours not coming back up? My pizza? Hey, really sorry about that. Happens every now and then. You'll forgive us there, would you not, buddy? <sighs> Gillian, perhaps we should go. My Neo Kobe pizza. <laughs> it sank just like the rest of this city's gonna. Let's get going, Gillian. I can't believe that. I'll never waste my money on one of those stupid things again. I like how genuinely upset he is. <laughs> oh, my pizza. A 
flea market almost. Great bakery. All right. And the one next to that. Big sprawling black market. Buy a mask. Well, let's try and buy happiness. <laughs> so should we be the mummy or the moai? So we got our mask and our Neo Kobe pizza, and we are done at Plato's Cavern. Go to Gibson's house. I don't know if I have to go to Outer Heaven first. I don't know. We're going to go here first, and we have to come back. We'll come back, but we'll get the intro out of the way at least. Meet Katrina. Right, she asks a bunch of questions, and if you don't know the answer, you can look it up on the internet, or you can go to Jordan and um, find out. And hopefully I'll know all of them. It's been a long time since I've played.
this is what we looked up earlier. I don't know if you have to, but I, th I think you do have to actually look her up before you can answer the questions. And she has a birthmark. Heart shaped. And it's on her inner thigh. about all of that. I'm Katrina Gibson, Sean's daughter. I'm... I'm so sorry. What's the matter, Mr. Steed? I'm very sorry, Katrina. It's my fault your father's dead. Gillian. No, if I could have gotten there just a little sooner, your father might still be alive. Oh, Mr. Steed, I appreciate your feelings, but I was always ready for the worst with my father. Every day as I watched him leave for work, will it be today, tomorrow? I knew it was a dangerous job. Katrina, that's... Well, I'm a Junker's daughter. Do you think you'll be all right by yourself? I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Besides, I don't think I have any tears left. Katrina, are you sure? Okay, Junker, you've got work to do, right? Keep yourself busy. That's the best way to take your mind off of it. Okay, Katrina. You're probably right. I'll appreciate any help you can give me on this investigation. Under natural resources. study and then we'll come back. Hmm. He's got a computer.
sunscreen. From Plato's Cavern. Chess piece definitely comes from there. Alright, so let's use the computer. Well, can we not use a computer yet? Snatcher investigation file. Why do Snatchers appear in the winter? Why are Snatchers nocturnal? I believe I have found the answer to these questions. Snatchers' vampire-like behavior is due to their desire to avoid exposure to sunlight. The reason they dislike sunlight is because of their defective artificial skin. Long-term exposure to ultraviolet rays causes overproduction of melanocytes in the epidermis of their artificial skin, leading to a form of skin cancer with the characteristics of melanoma. In other words, what we call simple sunburn is fatal to them. This relationship between ultraviolet rays and their artificial skin should give us a way to track them down. It should take at least six more months before they can develop a form of skin which overcomes this defect. These conclusions suggest several useful methods for locating and identifying snatchers. 1. Investigate skin condition. Check for any evidence of melanoma. 2. Check for odor. Cancer cells secrete a unique foul odor. 3. The presence of pollen. Snatchers are believed to hide in areas plentiful in Snow 9, a snow-like bioengineered pollen crystal. As such, Snow 9 can always be detected in places they appear. Snow 9 is an allergen, causing throat pain and sneezing. 4. Possession of sunscreen. In order to protect their skin from ultraviolet rays, snatchers use sunscreen even in the dead of winter. This is due to sunscreen's ability to block ultraviolet rays. Of these techniques, one in four should prove particularly useful. In addition, besides working to prevent this skin cancer, Snatchers maintain facilities for treating artificial skin which has actually become cancerous. I have succeeded in identifying the hospital where this is performed. P.S. Watch out for a bounty hunter named Random Hajil. So you found their hospital.
What's wrong with Alice? Is there something out there? A snatcher, maybe. Katrina, you stay here. Something in the bushes. bushes. Alright, let's return to the study. Is it a crow or a raven? Missing something. Mm -hmm. I need to go back. It's not going to let me search what I need to in here for some reason. I know it's supposed to happen, but I don't understand why it's not letting me do it. So I'm missing something. Let's ask again. It's supposed to let me look at the house. I 
just ask her again everything. I'm missing something. something when I was out here with Alice both times. to be doing. I'm missing something. I'm, I keep skipping so, something, I know. Maybe I have to go to, um... Maybe I have to go to Outer Heaven before it'll happen. something. Maybe it's just not letting me do it. It might be too early. Yeah, it might be too early. I will leave. Let me give you my address and video phone number. Now give me a call if anything comes up. Thanks again, Mr. Seed. Take care. I just be confused with the part that happens later. So we're gonna go to um Outer Heaven. And the first act is by far the longest. The third act's pretty quick. Welcome to Outer Heaven! Table for one? Isabella Velvet. Holographic poster. Okay. In the future, everyone wear masks. They're quite comfortable.
was asking. mask and then we're going to go in. Trust this Konami game characters. Forces. <laughs> Real violence on the streets. Inferior copies. Jump off the stairs. Cosmic debris. an outfit. A robot. 
Look at the size of those eyes on her. <laughs> All right, let's ask her some questions. Holographic movies. Show the photo again. Uh oh. job or work regular hours. <laughs> Bony look. Piercing gaze. Pointy like hers. Big Widow's Peak. In his 30s, we got a pretty solid description. activities. Alright, but well, we have a description. Alright, 
Alright, so now we're gonna go back to headquarters. and get on Jordan. Get a list of suspects. Jordan. In a montage. I don't remember offhand which one it is. Some of them I remember, some of them I don't. It's been a long time since I've played. advanced computers. I think that might be right. Give it a shot. The face might be wrong. There we go. We did it. some suspects. We're going to go find them. Find our snatcher. Oh, 
do a quick save. <laughs> yep. Rodriguez.
screen went funny there for a second. Did I kill him? He has only lost consciousness. Excellent shot, Gillian, hitting him in the hand like that. That's not exactly how I planned it. <laughs> Trophies. Kobe Air Surfing Championships. Two hits. Buddy, time to wake up. Whoa, man, don't shoot, don't shoot! Gillian, while your earlier shot is justifiable as self-defense, <laughs> killing this suspect would violate Section 5, Article 2 of the Junker Bylaws. <laughs> you must first have concrete evidence that he is a snatcher. Damn! We should search his bathroom. We may find sunscreen there. Good point. Okay, let's move into the bathroom. Filthy. Legal drugs. Liquid sky. So that about explains everything, doesn't it? Yes. It appears that Ivan was simply trying to conceal the fact that he is a drug user. An air surfer, huh? Plenty of suntan oil. Out there soaking up lots of ultraviolet rays. And tanned quite brown by those rays as well. But he doesn't have so much as a pimple. Not what I'd call your typical artificial skin user. Ivan is apparently not a snatcher. All right, buddy, get up. Hey, I only do liquid sky, dude. Just once in a while. I swear, I don't touch anything else. Don't hurt me, man. Come on. Call me an ambulance, will you? 
I'm no cop, I'm a junker. I couldn't care less if you're a buyer, a pusher, or what. What I want to know is if you're a snatcher or human. Gillian, Ivan's skin is healthy. There is no way he could be a snatcher and tan like that without developing melanoma. However, HQ has just transmitted us a scanning warrant. Therefore, under the provisions of Section 18 of the Civil Code, Snatchers, and the Protection of Citizens' Rights, I will hereby commence a full bioscan of Ivan. Analysis complete. Ivan Rodriguez is a completely normal Homo sapien. Oh, I keep telling you, dude, I ain't no Snatcher or whatever. Now, would you please get me a doctor? Why don't you just put some of your drugs on it? Hey, I wasn't doing anything wrong, man. The friendly boys from Narcotics will be here any time now. Save your breath for them. Come on, dude, I ain't done nothing. I'm just in the air surfing. I just wanted to win the competition, man. I needed some money for that, okay? Hey, it's just drugs, man. Rodriguez sure wasn't our man. Too bad for him that he happened to look like the snatcher we're after. That leaves Freddy Nielsen. Let's go check out Freddy. Check out all the area. Locomoto. Underground hmm. passages. Let's go check it out. Freddie and Lisa Nielsen. Let me look 
detectors and motion detectors. Junker? All right, just a minute. Gillian, please use extreme caution. Huh? A woman? Ridiculous. Hasn't been in the mood. Hmm. Suspicious behavior.
Temple Jerusalem. further. <laughs> supposed to let me go into the bathroom. supposed to let me go into the bathroom. I must be asking the wrong thing. Freddie Nielsen is a snatcher. True. Without more evidence, we cannot get a scanning warrant. Uh, we'd like to take a look in your bathroom, if you don't mind. Oh, you need to use the bathroom? No, we'd like to investigate your bathroom. Really? Whatever. Please, go right ahead. Trying to get in here. bathtub. There's no mistake. 
Freddie Nielsen is a snatcher. Gillian, with this much evidence, there will be no difficulty getting a scanning warrant. We've got you now, snatcher scum. So, you figured it out, huh? Who's that? Know all about us, you junker? Oh, she was so pretty, dude. That, that wound. <laughs> John did that to her. Die, junker! <laughs> Beautiful. Jeez, those things don't go down easy. So, this is a snatcher, huh? I certainly hope it's dead. <laughs> Appears to be dead. So it was Lisa and Freddy who killed John. Freddy, that's right. So where's he? We can contact the junk collection team later. Let's get out of this apartment for now. We're outside now. What the? A light just came on. There's not supposed to be anybody in there. Perhaps Freddy has returned. There's only one entrance and we're standing right next to it. How did he get in there? Shall we investigate? <laughs> Good with knocking, dude. The only way in or out. is empty. That thing was filled with water just a few minutes ago. I read motion. This room. Damn. Where is he? Gillian, behind you. Ah. 
That it was, was close. close. <laughs> You're lucky I was here to save your skin. Who are you? Me? Random Haji. Bounty hunter. Bounty hunter? Yes, Gillian, a bounty hunter. As the Junker profession is so dangerous, their numbers have fallen dramatically over the past few years. As a result, the government decided to put a price on Snatcher's heads in order to encourage private citizens to cooperate in the effort to track them down. Naturally, these bounty hunters must register with the authorities. You said your name's Random, right? Uh, what did you do? Follow me here? Yeah, you got it. Investigations aren't my style. You track them down, I take them out. You have the legal obligation to state your bounty hunter registration number. Please do so now, immediately. <sighs> BH75001 Random Hajil. That's R-A-N-D-O-M-H-A-J-I-L-E. BH75001 Random Hajil. That's confirmed. I officially recognize you as a legal bounty hunter. Wow. Gillian, records indicate that he has already disposed of three Snatchers just this month. Counting Freddy, that makes four. Four? I've been at this a lot longer than you have. Just relax, rookie. So, Junker Boy, let me give you a little tip. You might already know, but Snatchers' weak point is their artificial skin. If they sit out in the sun too long, they get cancer. That's why they set up a hospital to treat this little problem of theirs. You find it, you can take them out, roots and all. Where did you get all your information? Wait a sec, you stole it from Gibson, didn't you? That's not really important. But now that Gibson's out of the picture, I need you to get busy. I track them down and you junk them, is that the idea? Anyhow, it seems Gibson found that hospital. He must have left behind some information about it. What do you mean, scenes? Don't you know anything about it? Hey, investigations are your job, right? <laughs> I owe you one, Random. Yeah, I'll get it out of you later. See ya, Junker Boy. A Snatcher-controlled hospital, eh? There's bound to be more than a few of them in there. Okay, let's try to sort all this out. Metal Gear, would you mind helping out? Not at all. Now projecting recorded video images. Gibson calls in and you two immediately head for the abandoned factory in the M District. But when you arrived, Gibson had already been killed by someone or something at the factory. From hair and skin samples recovered from his body, you determined that the perpetrators were two snatchers, one male and one female. In addition, from a floppy disk containing notes from Gibson's investigation, you discovered that snatchers have a crucial defect. Gibson was apparently killed because he had learned about this weak point. And this weak point is a key difference between them and real humans. Their artificial skin cannot tolerate ultraviolet rays. Long-term exposure causes it to become cancerous, a form of melanoma. This severely limits the places and times that they can operate to midwinter, when daylight hours are their shortest, and of course at night. And it looks as if it will take at least six months for them to develop a new skin which overcomes this fault. So their biggest weak point was that they had to keep themselves protected from ultraviolet rays over the past six months. Hmm, Gibson really put his earlier training as a science cop to good use in figuring this one out. And that's why they use plenty of sunscreen, even in the middle of the winter. As a result of this, it becomes clear that there is one thing they must have to continue their survival. And that is medical facilities 
where they can treat artificial skin, which has become cancerous. And it appears that Gibson may have located a hospital used for this very purpose. In an effort to determine where Gibson had been investigating, you analyzed his stomach contents, found buffalo meat, and headed to the only place in the city that serves it, Outer Heaven. Isabella Velvet, a dancer at this place, gives you a description, which allows you to put together a montage of the man Gibson was trying to track down. You then ran this montage through the city's data bank using Jordan, and that gave you two suspects, Ivan Rodriguez and Freddie Nielsen. But from the condition of Ivan's skin, you determined that there was no possibility he could be a snatcher. There was no evidence at all of melanoma, but as he was in possession of Liquid Sky, you turned him over to narcotics. Following that, a search of Freddie Nielsen's home turned up large quantities of sunscreen. Nielsen's wife, Lisa Nielsen, turns out to be a snatcher, and you dispose of her. And you confirm that the skin cells found under Gibson's nails were from Lisa. Freddie Nielsen also turns out to be a snatcher, and you dispose of him as well. The hair sample that was found in Gibson's hand is confirmed as being from Freddy. So you are able to determine that these two snatchers, Freddy and Lisa, were the ones who killed Gibson. But then we have a problem. The bounty hunter who saved you, Seed, Random Hajil. An investigation uncovers that the information he provided when he filled out his Bounty Hunter registration was completely false. So who is this guy? Friend or foe? What about the bank account he was having his bounty deposited into? It was a common account used for paying bounty, and the funds were retransferred from there. We couldn't learn anything from it. Thank you, Metal. And now for the real fun. The hospital that Gibson had tracked down. If we can hit that, we may be able to shut down this snatch operation of theirs. Or if we can find some kind of patient records there, we may be able to find them quite easily. So, Little John's memory might provide us with an important lead. That's right. If we're lucky, there may be something left that we can work with. Navigators record everything that junkers do, just in case. Just in case, huh? Well, this looks like one of those cases. Harry should have recovered it by now. Go see how he's doing. Seed, I'm counting on you to find this hospital. All right, let's get into act two here. Look around real quick. All right, let's go see Harry. time you got here, Gillian. I've got Little John's memory all ready for you. Were we able to get anything from it? Just relax. I'll put it on the monitor for you now. I'm afraid it was almost completely destroyed beyond recovery. Those snatchers, they sure do a thorough job. What do you mean? Wasn't there anything left? Like I said, just relax. I was able to get one video image out of it. I don't have the slightest what this is. But it's definitely got something to do with Jean's investigation. This is it. So, Gillian, do you uh, have any idea what this is? Hospital Olean? This is almost certainly the snatcher-controlled hospital that Gibson was looking for. You ought to run the name through Jordan, but uh, if that hospital is not legit, the data won't mean anything. This city is packed with unregistered hospitals. The sign in this picture looks curved. This word Olean might continue past the edge of the image. I've stored this image. You can view it at any time.
Just use the graphic memory command in the possessions menu. Hmm. Hmm. We have a photo. Heck of a shot. Hmm. All right, well, let's go check it out in the computer. Hmm. Well, maybe we should ask Napoleon. Password, it's a video phone. The revolution is ended. And let's call Jamie. Bet I surprised you, huh? Don't worry, this is just a tape. I'm at work right now. If you need to reach me, please call Neo Kobe Pharmaceutical Labs at 391009. Sorry to scare you. Bye! I just want to make sure it saved the lab number. We'll have to call there later. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's go meet with Napoleon. So we're going to see Napoleon. Hmm. 
Santa's here. Check out this Santa. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're no Santa. Uh, how'd you guess? What are you doing in that outfit? What are you talking about? That's it! Ugh, I'm quitting this job. It's too dangerous. Somebody's after me. I'm gonna end up dead, just like, like Gibson. I do like how he keeps asking for cash. Seem to let me. Don't want to seem to let me leave. Show it to him again.
Well, that's where Jamie works. Alright, I've had it. Don't call me anymore, okay? Wait a minute, Napoleon. I'll keep any snatchers off your back. <laughs> They're after both of us. You better worry about watching your own back. Oh, by the way, here. A little Christmas present for you. What? Tissues? See ya. Merry Christmas. Well, now he's gone. No surprise there. He's got plenty of reason to be scared. Besides, I got the information I needed. There's an advertisement on the back of that pack of tissues. This is an ad for Outer Heaven. Just how many different jobs does that guy have? Let's go check out that hospital. Visit hospital. Let's go inside. Super memory parrots. Pocket pets, pet and handbag. To make sure I keep an eye on the bit rate. Pollution.
licensed. Cancer Treatment Center. Looks like we barked up the wrong tree here. So, uh, now <laughs> we're back to square true. one, huh? Don't become too discouraged. We still have many leads. Let's head back to the turbo cycle. Hmm. Olean Hospital. Unfortunately, this wasn't the place. You're right, Metal. Okay, let's go. Alright, so it's not the right hospital. But we had to check it out and investigate anyways. We'll go check out our apartment. Let's uh, call Jamie at her work. Three nine one thousand nine. Neo Kobe Pharmaceutical Labs, can I help you? Huh? Oh, it's you, Gillian. What's going on? So sad. I'm gonna show her the picture. Alright, well we asked her, so that's about all we can do. Thank you. 
So we'll leave. Gillian, it's the emergency line from HQ. I'll connect you. Gillian, I'm glad I got you. I got a call from Katrina. She said she has something she needs to give you. Something to give me? What in the world? She seemed really scared. Kept saying that Alice was barking. When did she call? About 30 minutes or so ago. Damn. Gillian, we should hurry. Yeah, Katrina's in trouble. Let's go help Katrina. Everything's still on. trying to look at it earlier. Got it confused. <sighs> look at the model. Shambles. Honor is broken.
one of cards. Just keep calling.
Why is it not letting me finish? Something's odd. I know it needs to happen. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong to prevent it from happening. missing for the trigger.
getting somewhere. There we go. Gillian, I read motion. Use extreme caution. The signal is coming from outside the window. It's Alice! The dog is dead. Body temperature suggests it was killed about ten minutes ago. No doubt the work of Snatchers. Scum! No reason to kill the poor animal. Katrina! Where's Katrina? We can leave the cleanup here to the junk crews. We should look for Katrina. Judging from the mess they made here, it looks like they were looking for something. We're quite upset that they couldn't find it. Perhaps that means that Katrina is still safe. That's true. If they had her, then there'd be no need to turn the place upside down like this. Perhaps Katrina took whatever they were looking for and fled. I bet you're right, Metal. We've got to find her before they do. Let's get back to the turbo cycle. I'm just gonna look through downtown for someone. I guess I gotta go everywhere first. <laughs> She hasn't called. Not here. We knew that already. We already looked. I 
take a look again. Do I have to call Napoleon? Do we have to call Napoleon? Did I have the right number? That's it. Bet I surprised you, huh? Don't worry, this is just a tape. I'm at work right now. If you need to reach me, please call Neo Kobe Pharmaceutical Labs at 391009. Sorry to scare you. Bye! Yeah. Missing something. But did I have to go through every room in headquarters? Maybe. Good afternoon. Neo Kobe Pharmaceutical Labs. May I help you? Oh, Gillian, what's up? Yeah. Alright, well, that didn't help. Frustrating. Let me go where I need to go. I guess I gotta go to every room in Junker Headquarters. Hang on a second. <clears throat> Where's the storm? Could you lower it a bit? I'm picking you up on my mic.
Go to my house. Yeah, now. Wait a sec. My lights are on. That's weird. I know I shut them off before I left. Be careful. A snatcher may be in your apartment. Searching the place, maybe? I don't have any evidence up there. Lock the front door. We're not letting anything out of here. Go to the bathroom. Open the booth. I'll open the blinds by altering the electrical polarity. Are you ready? Okay. Go ahead. All right. Now opening the blinds. Whoa! -ho -ho! <laughs> you pervert! Get out of here! I hope you learned your lesson, <laughs> Gillian. Uh. You definitely had that coming to you. Oh, yeah? Well, I didn't exactly see you close your eyes, either. That is because my optical sensors are not equipped with retractable shutters. Oh, shut up. You know exactly what I mean. 
Here comes Katrina. I can't believe you did that, Gillian! Uh, well, uh, you see, I was just... Face up to it like a man. You shut up! I'm just glad that you're safe, Katrina. I was so frightened. I just looked up your address and I let myself in. I'm sorry. Did I surprise you? Surprise me? <laughs> you bet you surprised me. I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, by the way, uh, how did you get in? Hey, I'm the daughter of a junker. I can pick locks in my sleep. I see. And you avoided the censors as well. Hmm. You may have a promising career ahead of you. <gasps> Ooh. Check out your bath towel. <laughs> I think in the original she's 14, but they aged her up in this version because of um, obvious implications. Yes. They actually give you a hint to it earlier in the game with the great meals slash eat me sign with the letters burn out and of course the chess piece.
What's the address of that hospital? CX District, PHC 77. The director is Chinese. Name, Qin Shu Ong. Hmm, Qin Shu Ong. He's probably a snatcher too. So we finally found their nest. Gillian, please be careful. Don't worry, Katrina. You're safe now. They won't be coming after you. Just to be on the safe side, we will have Kobe police take you into protective custody. Gillian, I'm sorry about the way I reacted in the shower. Maybe if your timing had been a little better, we might have... Don't worry about it, Katrina. I think I needed a cold shower anyway. I'm... I'm just so confused. I don't want to lose anybody else. All right, let's go, Metal. We have to pay a visit to Queen's Hospital. Queen's Hospital it is. Let's go inside. I should get my gun ready.
sneak up on us now, do we? Probably need new caps. Alright, we'll check out the last one. He's 50 years old. St. Basil's Cathedral. Continue to look around. Computer. Out of heaven. There seems to be a scrap of paper caught between these two drawers. The others are empty. It appears that someone tried to straighten up in a hurry. Let me see that paper. Here it is. What? What is this? It looks like Chinese or something. Metal translated. Okay. Let's see. Patient record. First examination. I'm not familiar with the next five characters. It's the first time I've ever seen any of them. I thought you were supposed to be really good at Chinese. My strongest areas are in Chop Suey, Egg Fu Young, and Wantons. Hmm. <laughs> Rare Chinese characters. Or maybe some kind of code? 
At any rate, this is definitely part of someone's chart. If we can figure out these characters, we may be able to uncover another Snatcher. What do you suppose happened to the other records? Looks like someone cleaned them out of here. Uh, maybe they knew we were coming. Somehow I get the feeling that the Snatchers know what we're up to. I'll store the fragment of the file. <laughs> The number you have reached is not in service at this time. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. <laughs> JT and T Neo Kobe. <laughs> Gotta find Napoleon. Alter Heaven. You smell just like him. I <laughs> mean, untrustworthy attitude. <laughs> Rate Junker. Have a seat, Gillian. We're safer in a crowded place like this. Jeez, you really had me fooled. Two rolls in one. Isn't tight. Well, you know, you gotta understand. Being an informer isn't exactly the safest job on the planet, you know. That's why it's important to be a master of disguise, like me. Yeah, but I feel pretty stupid. I mean, all that time I was asking you about where Jean went, I didn't realize I was asking someone who actually worked there. Hey, I was just as surprised as you were. But I didn't know that Gibson had been here. You see, I wasn't working that day. Anyhow, it's not masquerade night today. Uh, why don't you take that mask off, Napoleon? It's a little unnerving sitting here talking to a wolf. Uh, all right. I suppose there's no harm there. Boy. Ugh, you really work up a sweat in these full-face masks. Oh, boy. Uh, maybe you should have left that on. <laughs> what? Ah, uh, uh, still, 
you did a nice job of figuring out who I was. Come on, Napoleon. That stupid phone recording with the Wolfman? JT&T would never do anything that tasteless. Besides, what really tipped me off was that constant sneezing of yours. Sneezes, eh? Well, listen, you want me to tell you why I'm called Napoleon? Because winter gets the best of you. Napoleon Bonaparte sent his enormous army into Russia in 1812, but suffered a major defeat because of the snow. Oh, I get it. Yeah, the, the sneezing isn't a cold. It's my allergy to snow nine pow. So, anyhow, what did you want to know? I've got a couple of questions to ask you. Eh, fire away. Fur. Uh, spoiler alert. So that's it. Benson. Beryllium is B E. Nitrogen is N. Sulfur is S. And oxygen is O. And another N makes Benson. The name Benson was encoded on this file. Benson. I sure hope it is not referring to the chief, Benson Cunningham. Or to our friendly engineer, Mr. Harry Benson. No, that couldn't be. No way! But the possibility, though remote, does exist. Metal. I want you to cut off all your data transmissions to headquarters now. Understood. Now disabling automatic transmission routines. Done. No further data transmissions to headquarters will be executed. My God. A snatcher in Junker headquarters? We've got to get there quick. Let's go, Metal. See you later, Junker. Today's little information tidbit is on me. Now take care, Gillian. Don't get yourself taken out by some snitch. I think I'll lay low for a while. You know, after all, you are my main source of income. <laughs> you be careful too, Napoleon. You get killed and you won't be able to sneeze anymore. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> See you, Napoleon. Metal, let's go. Uh -oh. Both out.
matches. Face to face. Chief's office. And we did stop sending information. Red Square. Check all the other rooms. Hit them all just in case. Meh. 
got his pin. Yoto Summit. Gillian, it's me, Jamie. Listen carefully. You know that Queen's Hospital? I found out that they undertook a major expansion project in 2035 to put in a basement. That's right, they have a basement. Basement construction is really unusual here in Neo Kobe. That's why there were still records of it. But there's more. The director of that hospital, Chin Shu Ho, has had his license suspended in the past for performing eugenics experiments at an illicit underground facility. Are you telling me Queens has underground treatment facilities? That has to be it, Gillian. Chin Chu Ho is performing skin operations on Snatchers underground. And that means that Chin himself is also probably a Snatcher. Or rather, the real Chin, the original Chin, was snatched. So, that entire ground level complex is just a front for the underground facilities. And if we hit that hospital, we can ruin the Snatcher's plans. Well, this is it, Metal. We're heading right into the enemy's headquarters this time. Gillian? Yeah? This sounds really dangerous. I just wanted you to know... I want you to come home safe. Jamie... The reason I left you is because I thought you were pushing yourself too hard, being self-destructive. And it seemed like the wedding ring you were wearing when they found us had become a tremendous burden on you. I didn't want that to be the only reason we stayed together. Oh, Jamie, I never felt that way at all. I'll be waiting for you. We may not have our memories, but you are the only one I've ever shared any time with. Be careful, Gillian. Jamie. Are you all right, Gillian? Yeah. All right, Metal, let's go. We have to pay a visit to Queen's Hospital. Her Majesty is waiting. Yep, we're going to the hospital. Just where do you think you're going? This is most unusual. The turbo cycle seems to be out of control. Switch over to manual. I'll take over. Understood. I've switched to manual control. Well, how is it? What the? We've got no brakes. Metal, check the brake system out. Pronto. Sorry, Gillian. Looks like sabotage. No doubt the Snatcher's handiwork. Sabotage? But the only one who could work on the turbo cycle 
Worry about that later. Gillian, we've got to do something quickly. <laughs> and a good good morning to you, my friend. Bud Miller with you here on the big 90.7. Looks like we're gonna have a bright the radio. <laughs> they have to burn her. Increasing. Pray to God. <laughs> Not that religious. <laughs> Hit control panel. Damn. Uh, what else can we do? Metal. Start punching buttons. Any buttons at all? Yes. Yes. Push anything. <laughs> seem to be doing any good. Damn, I was sure that would work. <laughs> Gillian, the road makes a sharp right turn just 1,500 meters ahead. At this speed, we'll never make it. Gillian! Gillian! Hey, Gillian! Huh? Over here! What's that? Gillian, over here! Random! Gillian, you gotta jump over to my bike! Hurry! 800 meters until we reach the curve. Metal, you go first! What? Not again! Move your butt! That curve's just ahead! Understood. One, two, three! All right, Gillian, now it's your turn. Keep her steady. 300 meters until you reach the curve. Gillian, jump! I can't! And my timing's off! I. 150 meters! Gillian, now! 70 meters! Now, Gillian, now! so fast I'm right here <laughs> don't you even know how to ride a motorcycle <laughs> Gillian it's not much farther to Queen's Hospital and you could probably use the exercise anyway why don't we just continue the rest of the way like this <laughs> Random, are you sure you know what you're doing? This isn't going to be a field trip, you know. We may not come back. Well, the bounty for this one will more than make up for it. If you're around to spend it, that is. Gillian, let's get going.
lower level. It looks like Jamie was right. Queen's Hospital does have a basement. And that basement is the Snatcher's main lair. Out of the frying pan and into the fire, as they say. Well, what do we do now, Gillian? <laughs> it's a very narrow stairway. We'll have to go down single file. Okay, uh, who's going to take the point? That's obvious. The guy with the light. Hey, that's not <laughs> Well, well, what do we have here? It's the hospital corridor. It's the same hallway, but not the one that's on the first floor. So what does that mean? An entire floor of Queen's Hospital has been duplicated underground. So the same floor is both upstairs and downstairs, sort of like parallel worlds. So that desolate setup upstairs is all just a smokescreen. They're making it look like the place is closed down, but in reality, they're keeping themselves quite busy. Gillian, that means we're already right in the middle of their headquarters. Please use extreme caution. Just snatchers of waxing floors. <laughs> Only two switches this time. Let's save. So we're in the underground hospital. their maintenance facility. This one was probably still waiting to get its artificial skin installed. So this is what they really look like, huh? 
Yeah, that's the scariest thing about them. You can't tell them from real people once they've got that skin on. Perhaps that's humanity's great weakness. We're always judging books by their cover. And it's just that human weakness that they're out to take advantage of. All right, Random. Metal, let's go. The HQ's junk squad can take care of him later. We've got an investigation to do. Impressive! <laughs> Looks like I misjudged you, Junker. Not have looked at everything in the second round. Let's see, maybe it'll let me look at door three. Morgue. And yeah, we'll go back and finish up.
just room number three. Alright, let's try pushing both buttons simultaneously. The two buttons are on opposite panels, so there's no way one person can push them both alone. But if two of us work together, it might do it. That's it, Gillian. It makes perfect sense. It's the same system they used to use in nuclear missile silos in the late 20th century. Eliminates the risk of one man going nuts and acting alone. Well, it's hard to be sure, but let's give it a try anyway. I've got button one. Random, you push number two. You ready? On three. One, two, three. Come on! You did it! Door number three opened. With safety measures like that, they must have had a good reason for wanting to keep it closed. Here's the morgue. Let's save here. skeletons in this room it's it's their morgue perhaps victims of the snatchers well it doesn't look like whoever put them here was too worried about making sure they would rest in peace no it doesn't these have got to be their victims this is probably where they hide the bodies of the originals they snatch from places like outer heaven they probably picked outer heaven because it gets a lot of VIP traffic Plus, during masquerade time, they could work the place and still keep their identity secret. Yeah, and the guy who set up the link between them and Outer Heaven was Freddy, that taxi driver. They must have gone after him, not because of who he was, but what he did. After all, with a taxi, there's plenty of chances to milk your customers for information. That's probably how they learned about Outer Heaven and Plato's Cavern. I've been wondering what they had done with the bodies. Wanna hide a book? What better place than the library? Need to hide a body? How about the morgue? And for them, keeping the bodies hidden is crucial. I mean, if somebody who's supposed to be dead is out walking the streets, <laughs> it wouldn't be too hard to figure out that something screwy is going on. That means that if we can figure out who these bodies were, then we just nailed four snatchers.
Let's figure out the cause of death. Corpses. My favorite thing to do on a Saturday. Now performing simulated reconstruction of the head and facial features of each of the four victims. Commencing with victim number one. Now performing craniometric analysis. X-ray and sagittal X-ray, magnetic resonance imaging, and positron CT data gathered. Complete cranial data now being compiled. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction. First, victim's age. Estimate based on one, presence or absence of cranial fontanelles and chroma of epicranial sutures. Two, area of facial region and cranium. Three, height of upper and lower jaw and development of alveolar part. And four, location of cranial center of gravity. Next, victim sex. Estimate based on one, overall size of cranium. Two, parietal bone angle. And three, development of splachnocranium. Lastly, victim's race. Estimate based on one, overall cranial configuration, two, volume of intracranial cavity, and three, mass of the skull. Now commencing soft feature reconstruction based on average results of above analysis. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race, 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of first victim completed. It's Freddie Nielsen. Moving on to second victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features of victim number two. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race, 10%, based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of second victim completed. That's Lisa Nielsen. Moving on to third victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features of victim number three. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of third victim completed. Who in the world is that? That's the director of Queen's Hospital, uh, Shin Fui, uh, what's his face, uh... <laughs> Shin Shu O, Gilliam. <laughs> Shin Fui, what's Moving his face? Moving on to last victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features of victim number four. This one's the most recent. It's still decomposing. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of final victim completed. <gasps> it's, Holy. it's the chief! What? The chief is a snatcher. The Benson on the scrap of that patient record was Benson Cunningham. Judging from the condition of the body, I would estimate that the snatching took place approximately one month ago. So it 
was the chief who sabotaged our turbo cycle. In those matches we found in Harry's room, the chief must have put them there to try to set him up. No doubt Harry figured it out and decided to leave that face-to-face -face message. Wait a minute. Didn't Mika say that Harry had left to go find the chief? Hmm. That's right. He was probably trying to track down some evidence on the chief. Gillian, I'd say that this Harry has put himself in a pretty dangerous spot. If it was the chief that sabotaged the turbo cycle, doesn't that mean that he already knows we're onto him? Damn! Harry and Mika are in danger! That's far enough, Junker. Your little investigation is over. It's them! Who? Snatchers? Get them! My arm! I can't reach my blaster! I'm hit in the leg! Is that the best you can do, Junker? Who's, who's there? Chin! Jin Shu off, you scum! It seems you still have some fight left in you. You two are finished, but our plans move forward. We are now entering phase two. And when we do, not only this city, but the entire world will be ours to command. Phase two? What are you talking about? As you know, our operations have been hindered up to now by the flaws in our artificial skin. The skin's shortcomings have kept us away from ultraviolet rays, forcing us to do our work at night, underground, or in the winter. In the end, we had to construct a hospital like this, all because of the flaws in our artificial skin. This was the only difference between us and you humans. But now we have broken this barrier. Huh? We are on the verge of developing a perfect artificial skin. Thanks to the cooperation of a new partner in our plan. Perfect artificial skin? Uh, a new partner? Once we have the new skin, nothing will be able to stop us. And with that, our plan moves to phase two. Our little experiment in this city will end, and we'll move in force to take over the world. Don't be so sure. You won't get out of the city that easy. <laughs> you humans are always so overconfident, so naive. What are you talking about? I'm sure you're aware that the Kyoto Summit, being held to decide how to handle this natural problem, opens tomorrow. Metal, is that right? Yes. Countries around the world are concerned about the Snatcher problem. It will be one of the main topics discussed at this year's summit. That's right. Tomorrow, we attack the summit. <laughs> you must be crazy. The security <laughs> there will be incredible. You won't even get close. Must I explain everything to you, Junker? Aren't you even aware that a fellow Junker will be giving a special presentation at the summit? The Chief! Cunningham! So that's why you snatched him. We've known that your Chief would be speaking at the summit for over three months now. Gillian, the summit is tomorrow. We have to hurry. Listen, we have your Chief. You Junkers are at our mercy, and so is this city. And tomorrow, we move on the world! <laughs> Nothing can stop us now. We will finally achieve our long-awaited goal of global domination. <laughs> Who is this we you keep talking about? We? We are an evolved life form. Given life in the depths of the Kremlin by our creator, Madnar. We are a new race. Modnar? Modnar? The Kremlin? Those names are familiar, but... Our goal is to snatch all of the world's leaders 
and then achieve total control of human thought and worldwide racial unification. You're insane. Humanity won't be so easily dominated. You underestimate the strength of the human spirit. I think not. In the same way as the Nazis, our strategy begins with the overpowering of the spirit of the people. We will strike at you humans' weakest point, the most primitive part of your psychological makeup, your suspiciousness and fear. By provoking suspicion and mistrust throughout the populace, we will destroy that fragile fabric which holds your society together, that of trust. Fear is you humans' weak point. It is the primitive part of your brains that binds you forever to your animal ancestors and makes you vulnerable. By stimulating that part of your atavistic instincts, our plan can succeed magnificently. Gillian, at this rate, they'll kill us all. You've got to get out alive. You're a junker. Just one of you have in mind. I've got a big fireworks show ready for him. Better that than get snatched. What? You're gonna blow yourself up? No, we're better off fighting together. Hey, it won't work. I'm hitting the thigh. Ow, oh, damn. <laughs> a bounty hunter can't do anything with a leg wound like this. I might as well have been shot in the head. There must be some way out of here. Hey, I wasn't doing this job just for fun. I stayed ready for situations like this. I've always been prepared to go out with a bang. It's December. A little late for fireworks. So it'll be an off-season show. No, I can't let you. My belt's packed with TNTPX. You know, that really strong stuff they use in the mines on Mars. One push, and this whole hospital will go. No trouble at all. No time to sit around thinking, Junker Boy. Go! What are you doing? Get your butt moving, you fool! Get out through this air shaft. I've got a powerful strobe on me. Its flash will screw up their sensors long enough for you to get out. Now, you with me? Fireworks are better from a distance anyway, Gillian. Are you two finished chatting? Then I think it's time for you to die. Mm -hmm. We're quite busy, you know. You ready? When I give the signal, break into the air shaft and run, and don't forget your blaster. Metal, stay with me. Yes, sir. Random. Gillian. Doesn't look like I'm gonna have a chance to call in that debt you owe me. Don't worry. I'll pay it back to the Snatchers with interest. All right, go! Run, Gillian! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I'm gonna save here. I don't want to go back, I want to go forward. On the old factory. We know something's nearby, just let me go. Thank 
goodness. Doesn't always read my shots. It doesn't bode well for the next act. <laughs> What in the world? This is part of the tube liner, the city's long abandoned subway system. You mean Queen's Hospital and this were connected? Yes, it would appear that the Snatchers were using this to move from place to place. This would provide them with the perfect way to move about while still avoiding the ultraviolet rays they hate so much. We should have realized this sooner. The city is crisscrossed by the tube liner's old lines. And since they are abandoned, the Snatchers could move undetected as well. Aha! Uh -huh. That's how those two we caught a glimpse of at the abandoned factory where Gibson was killed were able to disappear so quickly. They must have used this subway. That would appear to be correct. The tube liner passes underneath that factory site as well. That would also explain why sand from the factory was in the air duct at the hospital. So this is the trick they were using to stay out of the sun and avoid being seen while they moved around. Now we know why it took so long to uncover them. All right, let's follow the subway. We should be able to get out when we get to the nearest station. <laughs> Damn, we're probably lost. Slightest, but let's climb it and see. All right, now climbing the ladder. We seem to have emerged into an odd place. Wait, this room. It's Freddie Nielsen's bathroom. He was using this shaft from the bathtub to get down into the subway. So that's how he did that. As I recall, after you disposed of Lisa, he somehow entered the apartment without using the regular entrance. Which he accomplished by using this secret passage into his bathtub. The bathtub must be of a double construction. The bottom is actually a lid. When they wanted to hide the passage, all they needed to do was fill the tub. And to get in and out, they would just drain the water into another tank. Jeez. Double bottom bathtubs? Abandoned subways? <laughs> Snatchers really go out of their way to stay out of the sun. Okay, Gillian, let's head outside. I could have swore his apartment was on the second floor, too. <laughs>
Ben's a big fan of Moscow. Is he dead? He's junk now. Stubborn <laughs> one, wasn't he? Jeez. He made it through that explosion and was waiting for us out here. If those things ever get control of the city, there's no way we'll ever get it back. We've got to stop them before that. And to do that, we have to prevent the chief from getting to the Kyoto summit. I know. And I have to pay back my debt to random. Let's use this taxi to get back to Junker Headquarters. I planned on it. I just hope Mika and Harry are safe.
No, open the damn thing. Anything could be inside. Mika! Mika, are you all right? Metal, how is she? Her pulse is normal. The only external injuries are to her forehead, and they are not serious. There's been no significant blood loss. Uh, uh. Mika, come on, snap out of it. It's me, Gillian. Uh, Gillian? Gillian? Mika, what happened? Gillian, the chief. The chief is a snatcher. So he's finally shown his true colors. Harry, Harry's... What's happened to Harry? Harry put me in the pod and sealed the main door. He locked the snatcher in. That was smart. Not even a Snatcher can get through this shield. So where's Harry? He said keep the door sealed no matter what happens in there. And then he went in. Gillian, please help him. Harry! Mika, open the door. I'm going in. Metal, we're going in. Be careful. That Snatcher could be hiding anywhere. Yes, sir. Gillian, please be careful. The Chief is very cunning. Don't let your guard down. Don't worry. I'll watch myself in there. <sighs> Approaching the end of Act 2. Is that you? I'm getting old. Just look at me. What happened? I saw the chief messing with your turbo cycle. And that that weird picture in his office. Ah. Metal, how is he? Metal! I I do not wish to say. Really? That bad, huh? Gillian. Gillian, when I confronted him about what I saw, he showed me what he really was. I was... I was barely able to even scratch him. That's enough, Harry. I understand. Poor Harry. Man, is there anything we can do for him? Gillian, Are you really sad? I'm sorry. Harry, you'll be okay. It doesn't look like you're hurting too bad. This will work out perfect. Uh, you always were working too hard anyway. Uh, why don't you take a nice long vacation somewhere and rest up? Yeah, sure. Nice try, Gillian, but it's my body. I know I... I know I ain't gonna make it. You... You were a good kid, Gillian. Harry! I don't know how to say this right, but... But I've always had a special feeling about you. I've... I've always had trouble talking to people since I was little. Like my father. What I can remember of him... <sighs> Pulse and blood pressure falling. Harry, hang in there. Uh, you and I were gonna go out and tie one on, remember? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's... that's not a bad idea. You, me, and Jean, the three of us. But Jean is... Metal, quiet! Gillian, I've lived my life alone. I didn't know my parents or family. Always so stubborn, glued to my research. I never really trusted anybody. That was a mistake. 
blood pressure continuing to fall. Harry? After... after Jean died, I... I felt it. Human warmth. Companionship. I know what you mean. Harry and I just... I just wanted to get along with everybody. I don't need no Nobel Prize. For 50 years, I've been searching, trying to find something I lost. <laughs> Looks like I'll never find it now. Killian, he's about... <laughs> Looks like I've been talking too much. It's, it's up to you now, Killian. I'm... I'm finished. You won't forget this old grouch, will you? Harry! Killian... Killian, you've got to believe in yourself. You're... You're... You're the last... Junker. Harry! to me. If that snatcher gets me, you've got to take Mika and run. Then you've got to blow up Junker headquarters. Blow it sky high! You understand me? Yes, sir. I just hope it doesn't come to that. So, where should we start our search? Alright, we're gonna find you, snatcher, and kill you. Okay. find you and we're going to kill you.
けですよ。But you'd better be a pretty good shot. <laughs> this kid goes well home so in a far. bag. <laughs> Shoot, Gillian! Kill this thing! Don't worry about me. Mika! What are you going to do? I have you now, Junker! You give for Harry. The Snatcher's functions have been terminated. Mika, are you all right? Yes. Yes, I think so. Thank you. Harry? I got him. Random? Sorry it took so long, but this ought to make us even. Junk, 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 junker! You may have stopped me, but it's not over yet. Gillian, this is just residual energy feedback. Its power levels are dropping rapidly. Green's hospital was nothing more than a maintenance facility. We have comrades operating throughout the city. More than you can imagine. Now our plans will move into phase two. 
For that we will enlist the help of Professor Lorraine. You? Your existence is meaningless. As long as you don't get your memory back. Good luck, Junker. My memory? Comrades? Professor Lorraine? Harry! Why, please tell me. Why do so many good people have to die? Mika! This is all wrong. Mika, don't worry. I won't let anybody else die. I've made a promise to Harry and Random. But the city is still full of snatchers. This fight is just beginning. Gillian, I have an urgent video call from Jamie. I'll connect you. Gillian, I've got my memory back. I remember everything. Your memory? Uh, so what about us, Jamie? Who are we? Gillian, it's terrible. What we've done... Jamie, what's wrong? I can't tell you something like this over the video phone. I would have been better off never remembering. Okay, Jamie, calm down. I'll head out right now. Uh, where are you? Is it snowing? I'm sorry, Gillian. I can't tell you. They've taken our boy hostage. Our boy? Who? Professor Modner is here, too. Jamie, what are you talking about? I'm so sorry. Snatcher! Gillian! We have Professor Lorraine. We only require her cooperation for a short period here at the Kremlin. So for now, I suggest you avoid doing anything foolish. Professor Seed. Professor. Alright guys, that was Act 2. With the start of this year's Kyoto Summit just three hours away, the delegates from the participating countries are beginning to arrive at the conference center. A major poll of domestic and international opinion carried out just last week shows that the vast majority of respondents favor a complete quarantine of Neo Kobe as a means to combat the risk of the snatcher menace. Now that the Chief's death has been confirmed, it won't be long before they strip us of our Junker authorization. They will be deciding how to handle Neo Kobe at the summit in just three hours. There are rumors that they're going to use nukes on the city to make sure the Snatchers are wiped out. That's ridiculous. Come on, this is the 21st century. That may not be as improbable as it seems. The world's leaders are extremely concerned about the Snatcher problem. The Chief was going to calm this hysteria in his speech at the summit, but that'll never happen now. Three months ago, government pressure on Junker operations increased dramatically. Gillian's transfer here was really our last chance. Our own Chief was snatched. It's not too surprising they don't want to trust us anymore. I've heard that the Army and FBI are going to take over operations now. That's correct. That too will be officially decided in three hours' time. Three hours, eh? Is there any way we can find their hideout in that time? If we don't, we and everybody else in this city are finished. As far as they're concerned, we're just like a cancerous tumor that has to be cut out. We have to hit the Snatcher's headquarters before then. Gillian, can you do it? If we only knew where it was, I should be able to manage something. Hitting their outposts, like Queen's Hospital, won't do any good. We have to find their main nerve center. What about the memory of that Snatcher who was impersonating the Chief? Just like the others, it was completely blanked. It's a form of self-destruct mechanism that they use. Wait a minute. Metal, what about tracing that video phone call from Jamie? It was no good. The call didn't last long enough. Still, it definitely did come from within the city. Damn. Where are they hiding?
Jillian, can't you remember anything at all? Didn't Jamie say something that implied you were somehow connected to the Snatchers? Nothing. I can't remember a damn thing. Metal, I want you to tell me everything you know about me. Why was I sent to Junker headquarters? Where did I come from? Uh, Gilligan. Metal, the Chief's dead. Tell me everything you know about me. Well, uh, you see... Metal! All right. With the Chief gone, you are the highest ranking officer here. You knew all along? Of course. Where were we rescued from? Three years ago, you and Jamie were taken into protective custody in the Siberian Neutral Zone by the 17th Siberian Investigative Force. More precisely, you were discovered in cryogenic sleep pods in an underground bunker near Moscow. Cryogenic sleep pods? You mean they were frozen? This is a photograph of the bunker. There is no record of when you were placed there. In addition, the third pod was empty at the time you were discovered. There were three pods? You were revived and taken into custody by the army. Apparently, as a result of the extended sleep, both of you suffered from complete amnesia. However, another theory suggests your memories may have been intentionally erased. This is the only piece of evidence found at the site. That's Harry's picture, from when he was a kid. That's correct. Harry is Gillian and Jamie's son. It's been confirmed by DNA tests. Harry? Harry was my son? Using the information gained from the photo, it was established that you are Gillian Seed and your wife, Jamie Lorraine. Both of you are American citizens, born in the late 1960s. The 1960s? In addition, both of you vanished without a trace in 1989. There is no other information available about you after that. 1989? Yes. You come from a world that's been gone for 50 years. But what does that have to do with the Snatchers? When the 17th Special Investigative Force was bringing the two of you out, there was an accident. Though the two of you were all right, most of the 17th was killed. One of them was a Snatcher. Of course, before their departure, they all underwent thorough examinations. So, if one of them was snatched... It had to be somewhere in Siberia, right? That's correct. And in order to attempt to determine the origin of the Snatcher, as well as your true identities, you were assigned to Junker Headquarters. The hope was that exposure to the Snatchers would help you regain your memories. Moscow? Fifty years ago? Almost everyone who was in Moscow at the time was killed in the catastrophe. So Gillian and Jamie are the only living witnesses? Hmm. Harry. Harry was my son. Did he know? No. It was highly classified information. He was never told. I... I was never able to do anything for him. Wait a minute, Gillian. Didn't Jamie say something about taking a boy hostage? That's right. They must know about Harry and are using him to threaten her. We have to find their headquarters quickly. We've only got three hours. Gillian, let's think this all through again. We may get some kind of a hint out of it. You're right. There may be some clue in the way they're operating. All right. Let's go over what we know about them.
No, no, the underpass. No. I didn't read the whole thing. Snow nine. This is where it all comes together. thing of theirs has led them to set up their headquarters in some place that reminds them of home or their creator. What part of this city is like Moscow? Moscow's really cold, right? They get a lot of snow, don't they? Snow? No snow has been recorded in Neo Kobe in several years. Well, then that's not it. Wait, what about that pollen? That crystal bioengineered stuff, Snow 9? Now that you mention it, wasn't it snowing on Jamie's video phone call? That's right. Their hideout has to be somewhere close to the Ina River. The Ina River flows for miles around here, Gillian. We could never search it all in time. Gillian, let's look at a map of the areas investigated so far. This is an enlarged view of the southwest portion of the city around the Ina River. This blue area is that in which Snow 9 is present. Now I'll superimpose a chart of the abandoned tube liner tunnels. From this we can establish those areas with Snow 9, which are accessible by subway tunnel. Damn. Nice try, but it's still too large. We can never cover it in three hours. Don't give up so fast, Gillian. What about that image of home thing we were talking about? Maybe there's some kind of geographic similarity. Maybe the same view can be seen or something. I'll display a map of Moscow alongside. Hmm. What's this? Look! The rivers are exactly the same shape! This is the Moscow River over here. It looks like we're on the right track, Metal. Show us the location that Jamie and I were picked up from. All right. Right here. Metal, before the catastrophe, what was at this location? The headquarters for the entire Soviet Union, the Kremlin. The Kremlin? That snatcher said something about taking Jamie to their Kremlin. Metal, what spot in Neo Kobe would match up with the location of Moscow's Kremlin? Calculating. This is the spot. It's presently occupied by an old church. It's rather large, but reports indicate it's been abandoned for nearly 20 years. And it's right in the middle of the Snow 9 and Subway area. That's it! That's their headquarters! Their new Kremlin! Gillian, let's go! Wait, Gillian. I want to go with you. Sorry, Mika. Hey, I'm a junker too, you know. I know, and you're a great one at that. 
So take me with you then. You head to the summit to warn the delegates. They haven't given up, you know. The summit's in Kyoto. I'm not going to be the only one to run. You've got to convince them not to use nukes on Neo Kobe. We've found their hideout. There's no need now to sink the whole island. Yes, but... It's a tough job. Can you do it? Okay, Gillian. I'll do what I can. Thanks. Thank you, Mika. Don't say it, okay? Let's go, Gillian. Gillian? Yes? Um... Uh... What's wrong? How about dinner sometime? Dinner? Yeah, you know, dinner. Hmm. Mika. Not interested. I thought it would be nice, you know, to kick back, relax. It's Christmas after all. Christmas, huh? I'll be back by then. Gillian, we have to hurry. That's a promise, right? I heard you. Yeah, okay. But I gotta go to church first. <laughs> I'll see you soon then. <laughs> okay, Metal, let's go. locations lift off flight configuration now gaining altitude Jamie please be safe Gillian please keep in mind that we're working with a strict time limit a 50 year debt in three hours Snow! Snow 9, to be specific. We've entered the Snow 9 region. Please put on your breathing filter. Direct inhalation is dangerous. All right. Radio transmissions will also be impossible from this point on. Understood? Now descending. Conversion to hover configuration complete. Gillian, we've arrived. Now opening the door. What's wrong? Won't open? I've scanned it, and it's not locked. It is probably rusted into place. Not surprising. After all, our friends always go in and out through the basement. Let's push it together. All right. One, two, three! That got it.
There's a ton of them. Continuing on. This is where they fuse the artificial skin onto the Snatcher's endostructure. First, they adjust the size of the still skinless Snatcher to the size of the individual who is to be snatched. The Snatcher's overall shape and size can be adjusted by expansion or contraction of sizing rods. Their sex is controlled by gender units, which are installed at this point. Then, the face is modified to match the intended victim by adjusting the size of the upper and lower jaw, cheekbones, temporal bones, and tooth alignment. Just like Gibson said, that means there are limits to the size of the people that they can snatch. That's right. The limits of the mechanism mean that they can't snatch children, the elderly, or people who are very tall or heavy. And this is where the artificial muscles attach. Is it organic? No. It appears to be coated with a type of plastic gel capable of mechanical response. Like human muscles, it creates mechanical energy through chemical reactions. And this is where the artificial skin is attached. In order to prevent the synthetic cells, developed using biotechnological protein design techniques, from rejecting the inorganic material below, they attach it gradually over a number of days. And this is the stuff that gets cancer if they stay out in the sun too long. Finally, they attach body and scalp hair. The process involves transplant of synthetic hair follicles as well, so the hair will grow back if it's lost. What about scars or birthmarks? It would appear that they make those adjustments at this point in the process, as they would for wrinkles to simulate age. So this is where the whole thing begins. The endostructures arrive here from the Kremlin. Then they convert them into copies of their victims. And finally, they head out into the city using the old subway system. With artificial skin maintenance being handled at Queen's Hospital. But who is behind all this? Gillian, look at this. There are some finished snatchers over here. Get a load of this. The U.S. President, the Prime Ministers of Japan, and the U.K.
噔噔。Gillian, you're in here too. <laughs> Figures. They were looking to snatch every VIP at the summit. And the last junker, you. It definitely looks like they plan on moving out beyond Neo Kobe. If they were to snatch every major world leader, they'd practically be able to control the planet. Still, that's odd. With their fluent skin, pulling something off like that would really be difficult. Chin said they had found the key to developing a perfect artificial skin. Maybe they've already produced it. No idea. But the number of snatchers here makes it clear that they're up to something new. Gillian, this is definitely their nest. We should destroy everything. Not yet. Not until we found Jamie. Uh, Metal, uh, how much time do we have left? The summit should have begun by now. We don't have much time. And once our legal privileges are suspended, I won't be able to help. In fact, I'll be forced to restrain you. I know, I know. If the military wants to avoid nukes and goes for a surgical strike on this facility, uh, what would they likely use? Probably a phased particle beam from one of the attack satellites. A phased particle beam, huh? That'll wipe this complex right off the map. Everything, including the soil, will simply evaporate. The attack will leave just a large crater. Metal, can you convince them to give me another hour? Even 30 minutes will help. Understood. I'll try my best. And I'll try to find and rescue Jamie in that time. I can't transmit here due to interference from the Snow Nine. I'll have to leave the area and then send the message. All right. Do it, Metal. Gillian, don't forget. 30 minutes. You must get out before then. I understand. Gillian, I'm sorry I couldn't help you better. Don't worry about it. I'll be able to move faster by myself anyway. <laughs> 30 minutes should be plenty. Go, Metal! Yes, sir. Don't forget! 30 minutes! Thirty minutes? <laughs> oh, this is gonna be tight. <laughs> that room's the only place left to check. Let's take a look. Let's shoot. I wasn't ready for that. They almost got me. All right, uh, let's open the next door. Doesn't look like there's anything here. guys are tough. Of course, I, think, I didn't exactly expect them to welcome me with open arms. I think there's one more. Okay. 
Uh, let's try this next door. Jamie, are you all right? Gillian, you came for me. Are you hurt? No, they won't lay a finger on me. Not until the new artificial skin is completed anyway. Exposition City. Artificial skin research? You? Gillian, I've got my memory back. All of it. What happened? Tell me, Jamie. They said they'd kill him. They said they'd kill Harry. They forced me. I had to help them with the skin development. They said I had to help them because the professor was ill. Wasn't getting any better. Gillian, the engineer Harry, he's our son. He's been living on his own now for 50 years. Jamie, I'm afraid that Harry's... There was nothing I could do. They forced me. But I can't do it anymore. Jamie! The professor... He just died. He was over a hundred. The professor? What? This old man? Don't you remember? It's Professor Modner. Professor Petrovich Modner. What? This old man is Modner? He's been confined here for three years now, just to develop the Snatcher's artificial skin. Terrible. Doing that to your own father. Whose father? Jamie, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. You really can't remember, can you? Jamie, tell me. Tell me who I am. Uh, what were we doing at the Kremlin? Are you sure you really want me to, Gillian? It's all so awful, but if you must know, I'll tell you. Try to remain calm, okay? Fifty-six years ago, you and I were involved in a top-secret Soviet project. It was still during the time of the Cold War. The gulf between East and West was as wide as ever. Everybody was worried about nukes. At that point, the world's armies were at their largest ever. Leaders still believed that a strong military meant a strong nation. There were rumors that there would be an agreement to end the production of nuclear weapons. On the other hand, the major powers like the U.S. began to get involved in a space weapons race. But not the Soviets. The conservative despots in the Kremlin had another, completely different idea for gaining military superiority. A horrible plan, something no one else would think of. At that time, the countries of the communist bloc were facing an economic crisis. Popular movements pushing for democracy were springing up all over. Communism itself was facing extinction. Facing pressure from the reformers, the Kremlin began to panic. And that's when that horrible, childish plan was launched. And that was the Snatcher Project. Replace your enemy's leaders with puppets of your own. Then you control their governments, their economies, take over a country from the inside out. That's right, Gillian. And to develop these robots, they assembled some of the most brilliant scientific minds from around the world. Some of them were even brought in against their will. At the crux of that development effort was a group called the Frankenstein Project Team. You and I were members of that team, Gillian. It was a four-person team led by the late Professor Modner here. The robotics expert was Professor Modner himself. His son, Elijah Modner, handled genetics and microbiology. For nanobiology and picobiology, myself. And for behavioral science and psychology, you, Gillian. Early development was carried out at a lab in Novosibirsk, but was later moved to a secret facility under the Kremlin. At the time, the Glasnost and Perestroika movements were gaining momentum, and they rightly feared for the existence of the program if it should become known. But some of the reformers did learn of the project, and they conspired with the U.S. to block it. Gillian, you were a CIA special agent sent by the United States to infiltrate and sabotage the project. I was CIA? Yes, and the government knows that. That's why you were assigned to the Junker team. What? Uh, who am I? Work on the project continued to go smoothly. But then, on June 6th, 1996, there was that accident. 
A mysterious explosion at the Chernobyl facility spread a bacterial weapon that was under development there into the atmosphere, destroying the country and the project. Gillian, was it you? Did you set off that explosion? What? You can't be serious. You think I caused the catastrophe? Somehow, during the confusion, Professor Modner and our son, Harry, managed to get picked up by American agents. But we couldn't get out in time, you and I and Elijah. In a shelter below the Kremlin, we entered a cryogenic sleep. Our plan was to sleep there until the toxic effects of the bacteria were safely passed. And then, 48 years later, three years ago, we were discovered by the 17th Special Investigative Force. Yes, but when they found us, Elijah's pod was already empty. Elijah Modner? That guy whose picture was in the church? The one that looks like random? That's right, Elijah is alive! Elijah is here and working on the Snatchers. Why don't you let me finish your little story? Who's there? It's been a while, hasn't it, Jamie? Ah, yes. And Gillian. It's me, Jamie. Elijah? Is that really you? Random? No. Not quite. So, you remember me, do you? I am Elijah Modnar. The only son of Professor Petrovich Martnar. I'm afraid I've grown somewhat old and feeble since we last met, however. Elijah, why are you doing this? Your father, Professor Modner, he just... He passed away a few minutes ago. What? My father? My father is dead? Elijah, what... What happened to you? The Elijah I knew could never do anything like this. I've changed, Jamie. These 40 years have changed me. I can't believe it. What happened to you? What happened to me? Jamie, do I actually have to explain it to you? Jamie, it's you. Your beauty is the cause of all that has come to pass here. Fifty-seven years ago, I was obsessed with my research, yes, and with you, Jamie. At the time, I was still young, having just graduated with my genetic engineering degree. My father's connections got me on the team, and there, I met you. You were working as my father's assistant. Your beauty, your smile, I was stricken. I saw something in you that I never felt with women of my own country. You warmed my cold, young heart, Jamie. You opened me up, and I couldn't stop my feelings. Elijah! Oh, I was so happy. The political situation was crumbling around us, but every day was a joy. I gained my father's trust, and with you there watching over me, I was able to work as hard as I ever have on the project. However, my happiness did not last for long. Gillian, it was you. You showed up and all was ruined. You arrived and joined our project team. Far from home, Jamie found comfort in a man from the same land. Your relationship grew quickly, and all I could do was stand by and watch. Jamie and Gillian fell in love, were joined, and even had a child. Harry. Even then, my feelings for you only grew stronger. Worried about me, my father tried to have me removed from the project, but I persisted. Jamie, I always wanted to be near you. And then... The democratic movements that had consumed the rest of the Eastern Bloc spread to our country as well. The Cold War was over. The hardliners who had pushed for its development were stripped of power and the project was cancelled. 
The reformers, trying to cover up the existence of such a crazed project, ordered that all materials related to it be destroyed, and that we stand trial for our actions. Jamie and Gillian were to be returned to their homeland. That's about the time that I learned that you, Gillian, that you were a CIA agent, and that you were trying to pass documents on our research to your military. The country had sold us out. I'm no politician. I couldn't care less about what happened to the country. All I cared about was my research and Jamie. And I was to lose all of that, everything, for someone so young. You cannot understand how great of a shock that was. Elijah. That is when I decided I swore I would see that secret craze project through to the end. At the time, the Bioroids were 80% finished. The main part, their endostructure, was essentially completed. But we still were having trouble with the artificial skin. The area that Jamie and I were assigned to. We called it artificial skin, but there was of course no need to duplicate T-lymphocytes, Langerhans cells, or endocrine cells. All we needed was keratinized cells and melanocytes to provide the pigment. With the artificial protein development techniques that we had in those days, full-scale synthetic cell development was very difficult. Research like this took months, years. The original project called for us to simultaneously snatch an entire country. In other words, a whole nation or an entire city had to be snatched over the course of one night. For that reason, a powerful biological agent which could quickly and effectively kill the population of the country was being simultaneously developed. Lucifer Alpha. That's right. A type RAO-11 virus which another team was developing. For someone like myself, who was closely involved in the project, blowing up the lab was quite a simple task. My God, Elijah, do you know what you're saying? That explosion killed half the world's population. I moved all the materials and records essential to the Bioroid project into the shelter and executed my plan on June 6th. After sealing off the lab, I brought the two of you with me to the underground shelter and we entered a cryogenic sleep. But not before I programmed an atmospheric research satellite to transmit a wake signal when the danger from Lucifer Alpha had passed. And ten years later, Lucifer Alpha naturally mutated into a non-toxic form. But the automatic revival system failed to work. Oh no, no no, it worked. Just as planned, it revived me ten years later. A little sooner than the two of you, of course. But even though you sealed the lab with the explosion and everything, you should have been exposed. Why weren't you? Oh, I was. But by that time, the vaccine L Angels had already been developed. So everything went just as you planned it then? Yes, up until that point. But my real struggle was yet to come. My original plan was to revive Jamie as well, and for the two of us to finish the development of the Bioroids. You, Gillian, you were to stay asleep forever. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Not after looking at Jamie's peaceful face there in the pod. Besides, I could never have convinced her to work with me on the project anyway. I knew the time was not yet right, so I changed the timers of your pods to permanent on. How? How could you do such a thing? And so for the next 40 years, I worked alone in that cold and lonely room under the Kremlin, trying to complete the artificial skin for the Snatchers. For days and days, no one would visit me. I never saw the sun or felt the changing of the seasons. Still, I always had Jamie by my side. You were always there for me to talk to. Just you and I for 40 years in that dark cellar. Oh, you poor, poor man. And then, 
Three years ago, my research was finally completed. First, I snatched the Siberian Special Investigative Forces to establish a transport route for the Snatchers. And then, to test the effect of large-scale snatch operations, I chose Neokobe City to be my experimental sample. Neokobe is cut off from the surrounding areas, a sort of miniature country in itself, making it a perfect test site. And since it's a melting pot of various races, it would also allow me to gather extensive data on snatcher modification and operational techniques. In addition, the element of suspicion or mistrust, which runs deep in Japanese culture, was another reason I chose this site. But your test revealed a critical flaw in your machine's artificial skin. Yes, quite unexpected, I'm afraid. All my research for 40 years. I gathered data and worked day and night to find a solution, but nothing seemed to work. So that's why you decided to bring Professor Modner here, right? That's correct. I discovered my father in one of the government's hospitals. He was old, but still very sound of mind. Naturally, he would not cooperate with me. Of course not. He'd never become involved in something like that. So, unable to receive his assistance, I decided that I had to have yours. But a mistake on my part allowed both you and Gillian to be taken into custody by the authorities first. Just what are you trying to accomplish, Elijah? You must know you can never get Jamie back. I'm only interested in discovering what I can of the human animal. In the past, it was because of Jamie. My motive is different now. It sounds like you're just suffering from the wild arrogance that corrupts so many scientists. Humans are such weak creatures. No matter how much they trust one another, the tiniest speck of suspicion can destroy it all. Look at how the Snatcher problem has caused such wild unrest. No matter how much science advances or how high we set our ideals, we eventually begin to suspect each other, to hate each other, and then to kill each other. The Snatchers are nothing more than a tool for bringing out this reaction. I am simply using the Snatchers to elicit the true nature of the human animal. I think this experiment has shown me the limits of human society. I sincerely doubt it will be able to reach any greater level of prosperity on its own. If human society ever hopes to reach greater heights, what is needed is an absolute leader, a firm ruler who isn't affected by these trivial episodes of mistrust. You're crazy if you think people would ever obey Snatchers. Of course they wouldn't. But if they don't know, they cannot object. There has been a time in every age that the people have longed for a god to lead them. As long as they give the people no reason to suspect them, then they can easily become their gods, indeed, a new race of super-beings. We are almost there. Once we perfect the artificial skin, Snatchers will transcend man to become this planet's true human beings. But you'll never get your perfect skin now. Professor Modner is dead. I no longer have any use for my father. I have a sample of the new skin he developed. Once I've analyzed it, I'll be able to make as much as I need. Or if need be, we could simply culture the keratinized cells, epithelial cells, and melanocytes in the quantities that we need. What are you talking about? How could you get a sample of perfected artificial skin? Why don't you take a look at this? We found this in the rubble of Queen's Hospital. Random. Random! Oh, an acquaintance of yours? He's... he's a snatcher? That term isn't exactly accurate. This bioroid was constructed by my father without my knowledge. He modeled it after me in my youth. He built it right here in this facility. And not only that, he programmed it to destroy Snatchers. This bioroid caused me serious difficulties. It's designed and built far better than my Snatchers. The machine itself thought it was human. 
My father input memories for it all the way back to childhood. Those two were apparently mine. Haven't you yet realized? Random Hajil is Elijah Modner spelled backwards. How like my father, silly old man. He did virtually overnight what I could not do in 40 years of effort. Furthermore, he makes a Bioroid so perfect, even the Bioroid itself believes itself to be real. What's more, the cells of the skin he developed are self-replicating. Once in place, no further transplants or culturing is necessary. Is he dead? Its main and locomotive systems are completely shut down. It's just scrap now. But the artificial skin is being kept alive. This we need. With this, we can move to phase two of our plan of full-scale infiltration of the world's major nations. The summit's already over. You'll never <laughs> succeed. What does the summit matter? Nothing holds us back now that we have this perfect skin. We can go anywhere we want, and there will be no way to tell us apart. I will have free control over the world. Nothing will be able to stop me. Politics and free thought will no longer have any meaning. My will alone will decide the course of human history. You egomaniac. Do you think you can snatch the entire population? There's a fully automated snatcher factory under the Kremlin. Even as we speak, scores of new snatchers are being born. But no matter how hard you try, you won't be able to snatch the people's heart and soul. What do you hope to gain from this anyway? Jamie, the human race is composed of fools. But I, I'm different. I will be its savior. Indeed, not just of mankind, but of all life on the planet. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Metal! In ten minutes, this church will be struck by a phased particle beam. I am guiding the beam from the attack satellite using GPS and 15 navigational satellites. The beam cannot miss. Everything in a two to three kilometer radius from me will be destroyed. Stop this foolishness now. I will not have my research destroyed by some souped up Pocket calculator. <laughs> Mental, what happened at the summit? The delegates, worried about the snatcher menace, voted unanimously to allow the use of nuclear weapons on the city. The military is presently imposing a quarantine on Neo Kobe. What? Do they intend to kill everybody? The populace is in a state of panic. However, they have agreed to lift the quarantine if this church is struck by the phase particle beam. This is our last chance. I will handle things here. Gillian, Jamie, you two must flee! You insignificant mass of metal. You'll never... One move and I detonate. Gillian, run! Metal, this is crazy! We can't let a single snatcher get out of here. And this new artificial skin has to be destroyed as well. I will not allow some talking scrap pile to get away with this. If you were the aiming point for the beam, then I'll just have you thrown out of here. Grab this little one and take him out of here. What? How did... You're supposed to be deactivated. I don't go down that easy, old man. Stop this foolish... <sighs> Shut up! Let's try to make our final moments peaceful, shall we? And you snatchers, you touch the little guy and the old man's head comes off. Random! I've always hated being used. Why don't you watch the final act with me? Gillian, 
You only have five minutes. The turbo cycle is just outside on standby. Use that to flee. Let me go. I'm Elijah Modner. I'm your original. I don't care if I'm an original or a copy or what. You and I are gonna die right here. If we both die, there won't be a copy anymore now, will there? The stupid logic of a simpleton, of a machine. Whatever it is, it's my will. Machines have no will. Machines cannot sacrifice themselves. We'll see about that. You have four minutes. You must go. And don't forget to take care of the factory under the Kremlin. Stop! Gillian, even if these memories in my head are fiction... Yeah, I know what you mean. Our memories of our time together are all too real, Random. Gillian, you've become one hell of a junker. Gillian, it has been most recreational being your partner. Oh, metal! If you can, try to pick up the pieces for me, okay? Like we did for Little John? Little John? Oh! Okay, Metal. Hurry! You only have three minutes! Thanks! Thanks, you two! Jamie, come on! No! Don't let her go! No! You pathetic old fool! <sighs> You don't even know how to love someone. You stupid machine. What is that idiotic grin supposed to mean? <laughs> By snatching you, I'm finally gonna get my real self back. Random, there's less than one minute to go. Thanks to you, everything will be fine. You don't owe me any thanks. Sorry to get you involved in such a big job. You did great. You're a hell of a junker. Three, two, one, here it comes! Later, kid! So you're really going, aren't you? It's our responsibility, too. Besides, if I go to Moscow, I may get some of my memory back. And if that happens, I'll be able to love you even more than I do now. Wait for me. I want to be with you, but first I've got to destroy this terrible factory of theirs. Jamie, when I get back, let's try living together again. What do you say? be waiting for you too Katrina Mika you're here too you better be happy Buster with all these beautiful women seeing you off I'm happy you came uh, uh let me introduce my my wife Jamie seed I suppose it's a little odd introducing myself a second time though what do you mean uh, you've never met them before have you what are you talking about Gillian we're good friends huh uh, since when it's the first time I've met her in person, but I've spoken with her on the video phone a lot of times. What? Have you guys been talking about me behind my back?
Should be another scene after this. So have they finalized what they're going to do about Junker operations? I suppose this will end up being our last mission, huh? Well, originally they were planning on disbanding the team, but now they've decided to keep us in business. So that means... That's right. We've been designated as one of the government's special police divisions. That puts us above the regular cops. So the government has decided that crime by machines poses a bigger threat than crime by humans from here on out, huh? They've chosen the new chief, too. So when you get back, you'll get to meet the new head honcho. Well, it's comforting to know I've got a place I can come back to. <laughs> Whatever you do, just come home safe, okay? When you get back from this job, you still have a dinner date to keep with me, you know. Don't worry. I won't forget my promises to either of you. Oops, almost forgot. Of course, I'll want to spend some private moments with my wife, too, huh? Uh, uh, what's wrong, Jamie? Harry and I will be waiting for you to get home. That's Harry's hat. We can do it this time, Gillian. Not some fake couple like before, but with love and trust. I know, Jamie. Take care, Gillian. I'll see you, Jamie. Wait! Wait for me! Take me with you, please! You? Metal? <laughs> Metal? Yes, sir! We didn't have a good frame to work with, so this is just a temporary body. Just call me Metal Gear, Sega CD for now. So they found your memory chip in one piece, eh? Random protected it from the blast of the beam. Random, huh? Wait a second. I've heard that sneeze somewhere before. Really? I didn't hear anything. Anyway, I want to know if you'll take me with you. Please, Gillian, please take me with you. Hurry up and get on board, partner. Yes, sir, Gillian. Throughout history, suspicion has always bred conflict. The real conflict, though, resides in people's hearts. This conflict has just begun.
All right, everyone. Well, that was Snatcher for the Sega CD. I hope you enjoy this playthrough. Um, we'll be back probably Tuesday with something else. But um, thank you for watching, and um, enjoy your evening.